right, good morning, everyone. Appreciate everyone, uh, all of you joining my session today. I'm Steve Yee, Director of Product Marketing at Xamarin. Uh, I haven't been at Xamarin very long, just about four months. Uh, and I spent uh, seven years at Microsoft in various roles in product management and was part of the launch team for Azure. So we'll actually be, be utilizing Azure quite a bit uh, in today's talk. But uh, let me just ask you this first. Is everyone enjoying the conference so far? Yeah? All right, fantastic. So uh, it would really help me out to get a, a, an idea of who I am talking to here in the audience. Uh, how many of you are working on enterprise projects right now? Wow, OK, just about all of you. <laughs> cool. And how many of you are actively kind of like in the planning and strategy phase right now for enterprise mobile within your companies? OK, nearly all of you as well. And, and how many of you have actually deployed enterprise apps within your enterprise already? OK, a few, a, a, quite a few already, but a few less. And then have all these been uh, predominantly Xamarin or with other platforms? So let's say Xamarin, OK, other platforms. Oh, OK, so just if you don't mind, just shout out and, and let me know what those other platforms are. I'd just love to understand what those are. OK, Windows Mobile, I heard Windows Mobile. Anything else? OK, native iOS, native Android, OK, great, OK. This is uh, very helpful for me to know. So why don't we, uh, well, let's go ahead and get started. So again, the, the title of this session is Architecting and Extending Existing Systems for Enterprise Mobile Apps. Um, but what I like to think of it, and I thought of this late last night, so perhaps, you know, some of this might seem a little bit weird because I was working on this all week until about two or three in the morning. <laughs> but thinking of like, how do we make enterprise users and data kiss? So that seems like a really weird, weird term to, to think about. It's like data and users and enterprise kiss. But really, well, the way I think about it is that I've come from an enterprise background. I was, a, I was a systems integration consultant for several years before joining Microsoft uh, on Java, uh, you know, doing EJB type work, and then also enterprise web and, and dot .NET work, was that how do we actually create a meaningful user experience in a, a non-sucky enterprise app um, for our users, our, our enterprise users, that takes all this mishmash of these disparate systems in the background and present really a, a compelling app and a good looking app for, for the end user. And I think especially with mobile, that's incredibly, uh, that's incredibly important and more important than the past because uh, I've had my share of utilizing really crappy uh, enterprise apps where the focus really was on churn it out, get it out quick, barely functional, and, uh, and just really making the enterprise user suffer and use it, but I think the, the real value proposition for mobile is really all about productivity, making people more smarter and more efficient. And so really that user experience is so much more important than before. And I think all of you are probably experiencing that right now uh, with, um, with the apps that you're building. And these really cool and different in, uh, in, and interesting scenarios around field force enablement and pe untethering people from their desk or from a laptop and putting this in the hands of people who didn't have apps before. And so there are a couple of uh, uh, visual, visual cues and visual analogies that, wanna, that I think about from enterprise IT. First is that spaghetti of those existing systems, mainframes, ERP systems, you know, these small apps that kind of grew from someone's desktop and all of a sudden became a mission critical app or a departmental application. Uh, and then the frustration that users and then also especially app, app developers, like all of you here in the audience uh, that experience. So, kind of like these Jackie Chan, what the hell type of moments of like, what are we trying to do? What are we trying to accomplish? And how are we gonna pull this off? But really, you know, the art of being a, a great software architect and a software developer, especially for those enterprises, is finding those different strands of noodles in that spaghetti pile and creating that connection between, you know, that data or those services and that end user and creating a, a great experience. And ultimately, like in Lady of the Tramp, you know, making that data and that user kiss um, and, and really have a, a delightful experience or a delightful moment. So hopefully that wasn't too contrived. Um, but I think you know my, my time in enterprise uh, enterprise development really ended probably in the, the late 2000s as a full-time software developer. And I think in many ways the job and that role has actually gotten a lot harder because uh, of you know things like cloud and things like mobile that have, you know, they have uh, certain, you know, certainly strong benefits, but from an architecture perspective and in the enterprise, it also brings about a lot of complications. So it's a, it's a mixed blessing. So that's why I'm saying thank you, cloud. Thank you, mobile. Great, great technologies, great, awesome things that you, you provide, I think, because now I got to 
glue them all together in a safe and secure way. All right, so a little bit of my personal journey, my personal perspective around uh, enterprise IT. So how that going back to that spaghetti analogy, and now this is a fairly appetizing bowl of spaghetti, right? It's got a nice little uh, parsley leaf at the top, but I think all of you know that the reality of enterprise IT is a little bit different. You know, it's, it involves a weeping, screaming, uh, and you know, spaghetti all over the place. And again, but it's our job as enterprise developers to actually create those connections and create that user experience that's meaningful. And ultimately, as I mentioned, making that user and that end service kiss. So spaghetti IT, going back a few years, all of you know this, this is all predominantly on premises. And, um, but I'm, what I'm trying to do is, is tee up some of the scenarios for what we're trying to talk about a little bit later. So SaaS came along, right? So things like Salesforce, people thought it was a joke, but then ultimately it's you know, taken over the market and, and then now everyone else is, is, uh, is following suit. So SaaS services from not only Microsoft, SAP, Salesforce, and an innumerable, innumerable number of other ones. And then the rise of public cloud, so Azure, AWS, uh, the only reason I put off Azure by itself is because we'll be utilizing some of the Azure services and the, and the things we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and if you're interested in seeing code, we will definitely get to code and demos in a little while, not just some uh, weird looking slides with dogs and Jackie Chan. So more and more of our compute workloads not only are continuing to reside on premises, we're utilizing SaaS services, but these workloads are also running in different public clouds. And so now we've got some interesting challenges here where not only is our things uh, moving out of the data center from a backend perspective, but also from a client perspective. So those desktops, intranet apps, and then now mobile apps are now residing kind of publicly and out in the wild in, in who knows where in the, in the, uh, on the globe, but still now need to be able to still access that on-premises services uh, and identity, the SaaS services that the organization is using, and also these cloud apps that are moving towards, the, towards public and private or, or hybrid clouds. And this, preside, this presents another challenge, and that's around identity. So when everything was on premises, predominantly there was one identity or LDAP store. Um, and that was you know, predominantly Active Directory. So how many of you are utilizing Active Directory on premises? Okay, you know, near, nearly everyone here. So you know, that's, that was my personal experience, and you know, they, they certainly use Active Directory at Microsoft. But now over the past couple of years, with the rise of other SaaS services, and, and other, uh, other authentication uh, and IDs are available. So not only Microsoft accounts and Active Directory, uh, but uh, you know, say Microsoft user accounts. You have Google IDs, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and the rise of OAuth. And so you know, there's that Jackie Chan moment where wh wh what's going on? How do I actually tie all these things together with the challenges of data in all these different places? And also these different identity stores and how do I actually use a consistent identity across all these different services and create that moment where they're kissing. So where, what we're gonna talk about today is we've talked about spaghetti IT, but I wanna present a couple of strategies or a strategy for how you can approach solving that identity problem. And then another, um, another problem is solving that data access problem. So how do we access that data from different data sources? But in this specific scenario, um, I think all of you know that you know, on-premises or on-premise on data is never going away, or at least for the foreseeable future. And so how do we get that on-premise data uh, back onto, uh, onto a mobile device running out in the wild? And we'll talk about that in a moment. All right, so first, let's focus on identity and authentication. So we've got this identity problem, and how do we have a unique identity or a single identity uh, where we're not keeping multiple usernames, different IDs across all these different services. And so our end user in the enterprise only really has to remember one uh, in a safe and secure manner. And so what are some of the common anti-patterns or things that we don't, we don't want to do? Uh, we don't want to roll our own solution. We don't want to store and create our own username password store and, and store that anywhere locally. Um, and we don't want to be uh, non-standards compliant. We certainly want to be utilizing the standards that uh, that the rest of the industry is using and, and trying to this roll your own invented you know, invent it yourself is is just a recipe for disaster and I think you know you know as a adopting some of these standards can actually be somewhat challenging and I actually you know went through some of these challenges putting this uh, putting together this sample but you think of the, the flip side of trying to rolling it yourself you know are you as smart as Bruce Schneier are you as smart as 
you know, a company like a RSA or the or Microsoft or Google who are investing, you know, tens of millions of dollars or hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, just specifically on security? And the answer is more more likely than not, no. So you want to utilize these industry solutions. And I think, you know, from a, uh, you know, from a from a liability perspective, you know, you can certainly point the finger at them and, and but and then also rely on them that they are going to get those answers and those fixes out sooner than later. So, you know, again, we're going to be focusing on industry standard solutions uh, for identity and authentication. And I think you see some of these headlines around some of the concerns around this that are that are happening, uh, both with small companies and very large companies. And if you look at this, uh, you know, the middle headline around the Russian criminal stealing 1.2 billion passwords. Those were predominantly uh, small to mid-sized type of the organizations they were stealing passwords from. Uh, they weren't the, from major ID providers like Google and Microsoft and, and others. Um, and then the, the bottom ones are, you know, kind of like your your inner thoughts around, man, if this happened to me, how would we solve this? Um, me personally, I would just get on a plane and just start over somewhere else in the in the world. <laughs> Full disclosure. <laughs> So how do we do this with Active Directory, on-premises Active Directory? So uh, what we're gonna, what, what I think is a great solution for, for you to start considering that you may have heard about or experimented with um, is utilizing uh, Azure Mobile Services and Azure, uh, Azure Active Directory. Um, have any of you here started experimenting with Azure Ac Active Directory yet? Okay, a small number of you. So I think some of you are very familiar with this, but I'll, uh, I'll go through this um, for the rest of you here. So we have our on-premises Active Directory store, um, but then utilizing Azure, we have the opportunity of utilizing one of their services called Azure Active Directory. And what it basically does is it's, uh, it creates an, an OAuth endpoint uh, in the cloud that you can, you can authenticate against, uh, just like you could with, say, Google, Twitter, or Facebook type of IDs. Uh, one of the added benefits of this is that it's also doing Active Directory sync with IDs back on premises. So it's a, it does bi-directional synchronization of users, groups, and also even passwords. So you can do password resets utilizing um, Azure Active Directory, um, and it'll sync it back on-prem and, and also vice versa. So this is a great way to you know, provide that single sign-on type of experience from a mobile device, for a web device, uh, for, for a web app, and then also even you know, an on-premises uh, smart client or fat client. And uh, this, the, the unique thing about the Azure Mobile Services, and not specifically Azure Active Directory, is that you can also utilize multiple identity providers. So, hey, you might have apps that rely on just, say, your, uh, a Google ID. So at, uh, at Xamarin, we, we don't have Active Directory. We utilize, um, we use Google to host our email and also for our ID management. Um, we can still use Azure Mobile Services for our intranet applications uh, to, uh, to do authentication and still use Azure Mobile Services. So, um, so the, the user experience you see on that right side are, diff are what the authentication experiences look like for um, utilizing Azure, or Azure Active Directory, and then the one on the right is utilizing Google. And I'll actually go through a demo in just a moment. So let's go into that right now. So here's a, a quick snippet of code. Uh, for, so this is code running on the mobile client, uh, and specifically utilizing Xamarin code. We're utilizing libraries that Microsoft provides, that these are freely available in NuGet. Uh, it's just basically the uh, Azure Mobile Services, and it's that mobile service client along the bottom, where uh, you get a client instance, and then to do, an, uh, to do a login, uh, you do this login async, and you're basically passing in a couple parameters around uh, the application URL, and the unique application key, which are those two lines along the top. Um, I apologize if you're in the back and you have trouble seeing the code. Um, we're definitely, we're recording this session and I'm gonna make all this code available on, uh, on GitHub uh, within the next week or two and I'll, I'll show you where it is at the end of the presentation. All right, oh, we don't wanna skip there. So, um, AV guy, can we switch to screen number one? Perfect, thank you, you read my mind. All right, so we're looking at uh, the Azure portal and we're looking in mobile services and um, we're looking under this identity tab right here. And I mentioned earlier that we have different ID uh, providers that it supports. So you notice that there's Microsoft accounts. Oops, ah, there we go, Facebook. Sorry, I've forgotten how to use a trackpad. Give me just a moment here. switch to the mouse here. Wow, something's 
second. It's a little wonky here. Okay. Yeah. Try that. All right. <coughs> cool. All right. Thank you. So we have, um, I've configured this to utilize Windows Azure Active Directory. Um, and this basically, this is our unique URL for, for our application. Um, our specific uh, application key or our client DC, only the, this specific app can do authentication or access this mobile service. Um, and our allowed tenants is basically the Active Directory domain. So uh, this is all free for you to experiment with from, uh, from Azure. Uh, I've created a free one called just steveyead.onmicrosoft.com. I'm not doing the Active Directory sync on this particular example, but um, it's, it's fairly straightforward to, uh, to set up and, and configure. Um, if I go into my Active Directory, I have just a couple of uh, users in my Active Directory. Um, so I'm a, I was a huge uh, Battlestar Galactica fan, and I couldn't think of a you know, an other interesting show I could, I could pull characters from. So I just have a couple of users. I've got, I've got Starbuck, Apollo, and, 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 and Adama, and then uh, I'm in there because I just like to fantasize I'm in the show. But uh, so these are our users that we're going to be authenticating, authenticating against. And then, uh, you know, so here's the tab here for directory integration if you wanted to do that sync, uh, bidirectional sync with on-premises Active Directory. So now that we've done that, let's actually step into a demo. And uh, this is the code to actually uh, invoke the, uh, to start the login process. And I have a custom, so I'm doing this in, in uh, Xamarin Forms, and so I've done a custom renderer for uh, Android and also iOS. I think the Microsoft examples give you like platform specific ones. I, I've been able to you know, extract that and create custom renders, so it all works within Xamarin Forms. And so now here, we just do call that mobile services client login async. We're passing the context and the, author, uh, the auth authorization provider, uh, which is just basically an enum of different, like say Facebook, Twitter, and in this case, it's Azure Active Directory. Um, and then this manages the UI for actually creating that login screen. So let me go ahead and get, get that started. So here's the login screen, and this is uh, doing it on iOS. We'll do it in Android in just a moment. So um, I'm going to log, log in as Starbuck at our domain. Okay, and we've successfully logged in. And you notice that all the information that we're pulling here, uh, it might be hard to see, and I'll, I'll pull up the Android version in a moment, is all information that we're pulling from Azure Active Directory. Uh, and the service for doing that is utilizing the uh, Windows Azure, uh, I'm sorry, the Azure Active Directory authentication library uh, methods and uh, some of the Windows Identity Client type of stuff that is basically all in here. So we're, we're you know, pulling client credentials and the, uh, the client token for subsequent requests. So you know, before that user can pull this information and query like they're on record, uh, we are, all right. You know, we've got an attribute here to make sure that, that we've got a, uh, an authenticated user first. And so uh, this is the, the, the first uh, authentication example and I can show you the experience here on Android. You know, it's uh, identical basically. Uh, but you know, just to prove that we're doing this in a cross-platform manner. Whoops. All right. So that might be a little bit easier to see, and you notice that, that all this information is coming from from Azure Active Directory, including this address. And just for some uh, eye candy, I've plotted a map here. So. Uh, let's switch back to uh, number two, the number two screen. Great, thank you. So, uh, that basically it's not, uh, you know, it's uh, not, uh, you know, you don't see any explosions here, but what we've done is actually done something fairly complex, is utilizing OAuth 2. And the great thing about the, uh, the Azure Mobile Services Library is that it hides, you know, all the complexity around all the different OAuth flows. And if anyone's actually looked at, like, you know, an OAuth flow diagram, 
you know, it looks like a, you know, basically a street map to hell where there's arrows going all over the place and redirections happening all over the place. Uh, the library does a great job of, of abstracting that and making it very, very simple to use. Uh, and then also the client libraries for running this on a mobile device uh, you know, are, are just a matter of a couple of lines of code. So I highly recommend investigating this and, and checking it out for yourself. Even if you're not using uh, Azure Active Directory, if you're going to be using Google or, or say, like uh, another OAuth type of uh, type of ID, these libraries still still work with them. All right. So we covered authentication and identity, and now let's talk about hybrid service and data access. So now we've we've covered identity, which is that that uh, ugly box in the middle. But now we have you know, data running in all these different places, on-premises uh, and in the clouds. What we want to focus is, saying on, is working on is how do we actually access that data that's continuing to remain on-premises? And that's not, that's not going to move anywhere. And so why don't we ask, like, why can't we just move that stuff over there? And then earlier in my career in some of those situations, I said, can we move that data? This, is, you know, this system is just so old and arcane, we, just, we should just stop and start over. Uh, but as I've gotten a little older and wiser and, and maybe even maybe a little lazier <laughs> is that, you know, there, there's actually value in keeping some of those systems running. And you look at some of these headlines for, you know, some of these massive integration projects that have had spectacular failures. Uh, so, you know, we've got, you know, New York gas utility spending nearly $1 billion to replace Oracle with SAP software. And that's not, uh, you know, and that's not going to happen anytime soon. These are multi-year type of projects, say five to seven years. The Obamacare website, uh, exceeding two billion in uh, in costs. Has anyone actually signed up on the Obam Obamacare website? One person? Yeah. How was your experience? No. no. Okay, bad experience. Okay. Yeah, that's what I suspected. I, I didn't even try. Um, and then you know, Air Force scraps a massive ERP project after racking up a billion dollar in costs. And so. You know, these are these are some of these things that are just uh, you know some of these massive on-premises systems. It's just completely unwise to actually uh, uh, to do try to do anything with them, and just you want to just want to leave them alone. And so that's that first anti-pattern around kind of like this massive lift and shift. Uh, but then you say, well, if they're going to remain on-premises, how do I actually get it to my mobile device? What are some solutions? Like, say a VPN. Well, you can certainly utilize a VPN, but I think that completely in my opinion, completely destroys the user experience. And it cre creates configuration issues, deployment issues, update issues. Uh, so I don't, I don't necessarily recommend that. But I think you know, utilizing a secure uh, identity solution like we just talked about makes a lot more sense. Uh, but then the other question is, hey, well, hey, why don't we just actually move some of this data up into the cloud, and, and then we can just do batch synchronizations. Anyone think batch sync is a bad idea? You know, like sync it on, like, on a daily basis or every 12 hours? Anyone think it's a good idea? No. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't think so either. So we want to try to avoid that. You know, you just kind you know, data inconsistencies and, and things of that nature. You know, perhaps say like a, a messaging type of situation if, if uh, you know, if that's necessary. But but certainly not type of a, a batch sync. And so, okay, on premises data. How do we actually get to it in a synchronous manner? Uh, what um next demo here is. A solution utilizing uh, again Azure, and, and that's BizTalk Services. So, is everyone, anyone familiar with BizTalk Services? Okay, just a small handful. So, this is actually really interesting. It's a it's a new service, uh, relatively new service from Microsoft, um, and what it basically does is that it creates uh, uh, you know an on-premises agent that runs on-prem within the data center. It just needs to resolve um, you know run on a Windows machine, but as long as uh, it can talk to any machine or communicate with any machine on premises. Uh, the Azure Mobile Service or Azure website can communicate with that resource. Uh, so it does a, a real time synchronous type of connection. You don't have to open a VPN firewall because that agent on premises is what's responsible for maintaining that connection and reopening that connection into Azure uh, if, uh, if it happens to go down. And so there are different types of scenarios that you can utilize here. You can utilize just say, hey, it's a SQL Server database, and I need a, a TDS connection on port 1433. Uh, you, can, you can definitely do that. Uh, in this example, I wanted to try to take it a little bit to the next level and say, hey, uh, let's actually do this with a web service of some sort. So I created a stub REST service that's uh, utilizing BizTalk services to pull that data uh, uh, synchronously from on-prem and, and deliver it to, to a mobile client. Um, now, I think. 
you know, you certainly have to think about what's the, the criticality and also what are the performance needs for pulling that data on-prem. Uh, just from my, I certainly haven't done um, a significant performance testing, but you can certainly scale out those BizTalk services units for additional scalability, uh, but you'll also want to evaluate how big your pipe is and, and, the, and the throughput and the bandwidth from uh, your on-premises as data sources and also Azure. And so let's actually run through a quick, uh, quick demo of that, of cross-premises data access. So if we can switch back to monitor one. Great, thank you. All right, so first place we go back to is back to Azure. And now let's go to our BizTalk services. So I have created a BizTalk service called Zam Enterprise. And if we go to our hybrid connections, I've created one hybrid connection basically back to my laptop here. Uh, and my host name, this, the, the local host name for this machine is this, uh, you know, Win8 Win Stephen Yee Mac. But in your data center, that would, I would obviously be the name of your, uh, the name of your server that you're trying to connect to, whether it's a database server or a REST server. And then in our mobile services config, I basically associate, associated that BizTalk service with our mobile service that we're calling Xam Enterprise. And so here you can see, this is the hybrid connection that we have created. Now, uh, our on-premises service is not terribly complex. It's just really more of a, a proof of concept here. What it's basically doing is just reading um, an on-premise JSON file and basically just sending that back as a RESTful service. And what's happening is that our on-premises, uh, I'm sorry, our cloud service uh, running in Azure Mobile Services gets that request from a client to say, I need this on-premises data from this service. And it basically calls that service on-prem, gets back the RESTful data, and passes it back to our client. And so this is all coming from uh, on-premises. So here's, here's on-premises. Now, what I want to show you here is how we're implementing this uh, with our local service. And it's just basically a, a, a simple web API of you know, reading, reading that text file, converting it to JSON, and returning it. And our cloud service running in Azure Mobile Services is this one here, when we're just doing a get. Uh, we're doing a couple of log calls against Azure Mobile Services. And we're doing a web client against the on-premise web service that's running and getting that sal those same sal uh, sales items, which is basically kind of a, you know, a bunch of name value pairs, and then returning that to the web client. So let's actually see how this works uh, on the client. What does that look like? So on our Xamarin project, if you notice, this, there's a lot of moving parts to this. You know, another great thing that Azure Mobile Services has done is abstracting a lot of the, the complexity here. So we're just basically uh, invoking an async API, returning a user info type, the name of our service, and we're doing a, a get call. And one of the things uh, embedded in that library is also abstracting that we're passing along the token of that already authenticated user. So this service running in the cloud is, is, is secure as well. So let's go to our uh, Android project, because I think that's a little bit easier to see. And so in this contrived example, we've got, you know, our, our heroes from uh, Battlestar Galactica. You know, the war with the Cylons has ended, and so now they are, you know, in peacetime, and they've all taken jobs uh, working at a hardware store. <laughs> but <laughs> they are, um, you know, they need to be on the go. They need to, to, to see these, you know, see the, the people they're selling to face to face. So they, they have uh, a mobile device, but because they have these legacy systems, you know, the, all the, the, the most recent sales and discount information is residing on premises. So how do they get that on their mobile device? Um, and so they, we've come up with this solution utilizing BizTalk services. So now they see, okay, these are the latest specials running on our on-prem ERP system that's not going anywhere off-prem anytime soon. Uh, so we've got a fall garden tool sale uh, with a discount of 15% selling snow shovels during summer, and that'll be a 23% discount. And these are the specials they can, they can talk about after they, they uh, you know, and they can uh, hold their heads in shame that, that they're doing this and not, uh, they're not flying, uh, flying spaceships anymore. So that's pulling from that JSON file, but let's actually spice this up a little bit and actually prove that this is running and pulling data from on-premises. So 
uh, we've got our fall garden tool sale right here in our JSON file. And let's actually come up with something else. Anyone got an idea? Very original, let's do that. Okay, and I'll put an exclamation point to make that extra exciting. All right, so that's running on our on-prem ERP server. And then let's actually refresh this info. And you notice that's what's refreshed here. So it's pulling that data synchronously from on-prem and it actually, you know, you notice that refresh was actually pretty quick and pretty performing just, you know, going through this conference wireless system. So this is a, you know, proof of concept of showing how you can actually get synchronous mobile data that's traveling through the cloud but actually reaching down on-premises and bringing it back to your device securely uh, with, uh, you know, authenticated using that, that safe and secure ID that we talked about a little bit earlier. So can we switch back to uh, machine number one? Great, thank you. All right, so we're about to wrap up here, and I'm, we're, I'll be here for any questions that you guys might have. Uh, we do have a mic uh, if you have questions, and, uh, and uh, one mic. So if you do have questions, uh, I request that you uh, wait till the mic comes to you so uh, it can be recorded. What we talked about is you know all the complexities associated with spaghetti IT, and I, I want to make sure that um, you know, we're not trivializing those things because I've certainly lived it, and I know that you guys are living it as well. Um, and then how do we actually solve this with solutions like uh, identity and uh, federating that idea across different SaaS services between on-prem, SaaS, and cloud? So we talked about identity from uh, on-prem, but then you know, if you're looking at Azure Active Directory, one of the other things that it also does is that also has a, a catalog where you can also federate ID to multiple other SaaS providers like Salesforce, and, and I think the catalog has like 2,000 others. And so, you know, it extends not only to the mobile and on-prem, but also to, to SaaS providers as well. And then how do we access on-prem data and services via cloud and mobile? I think we've uh, we just demonstrated that utilizing uh, the BizSock services and Azure mobile services to synchronously get that data from on-prem uh, back onto the mobile device via the cloud. Uh, if you want to learn more, we'll, I'll be posting the samples of this and, and a write-up of this on, on our Xamarin blog, so blog.xamarin.com. Uh, you'll have to, it'll probably be within the ne next two weeks or so. Um, we are, we do have a xamarin.com slash enterprise website, uh, which I'll be, in, I'll be personally investing a lot more time after this conference to, to, uh, to talk about more of these types of topics. Um, but uh, as I mentioned, I'll make sure that the samples that we discussed here, including the, the Azure client as well as the Azure Mobile Services services, uh, all end up on GitHub and, and publicly available for you guys to uh, to kind of walk through yourselves. Um, now, I'll say that you know my personal experience actually getting all this stuff working was probably a, a good five or six days, uh, but uh, I hope that just providing these samples it reduces your your time to to being productive with this to to within a day. Um, I would say that you know now that it's all said and done, it's a pretty elegant solution. But you know the challenges that I had was that you, know, you notice there's a lot of moving parts. There's several configuration steps within the Azure portal itself, um, and then you know some of the stuff isn't all, all that uh, well documented. You might find pieces of it here and there, um, but but I think uh, it's a it's a solid solution and it's GA and, and supported by Microsoft. And of course that we you know we're doing this using PCL libraries and Xamarin Forms on on the client. Uh, this is definitely a, a sustainable type of approach in my opinion. Uh, and that wraps up our talk for today. I thought it would actually go a little bit longer, but we've got about 10 minutes for, for questions, and I'll, I'll certainly hang around for any additional questions that people have. So um, any questions so far? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, in order to use the Azure Active Directory in Xamarin, is that I need to create a Xamarin binding for iOS and Android to yeah. use the library? You can, if you're just choosing to do it on one platform, you can certainly use it on a, any, any one of those platforms. It's a, it's a PCL library that Microsoft provides, so uh, it's, not a, it's not a platform specific binding. Uh, what I did here was utilize Xamarin Forms to actually make it work, make, have the same login experience across both platforms. So there is a P, uh, PCL, is it a component that just uh, I know from the... Yeah, you can just find it in NuGet, you just look for Azure Mobile Services. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, any 
see here. Is it uh, possible to do a hybrid of Active Directory and a third-party authentication within the same app? And if so, how would you go about that? Yeah, that's a good question. I thought about, thought about that myself. You can certainly uh, do that because you know, you're not storing, the only thing you're, you would really be wanting to store is saying like, hey, this user is authentic, you know, authorized to use this app is just basically storing their, essentially their, their email because you're not storing passwords, you're just authenticating the token. So if you have an app with multiple different IDs, um, then all you do is just basically just store that information, you know, the, 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 the email of that particular user and then in the, in the app settings and then on the Azure settings to say, I accept uh, I, I can do authentication across these different providers. I've got a question up here. Hey, we talked about uh, authentication on identity. How you secure the communication? Um, like for public safety systems, um, there is a lot of restrictions on how the data should be sent back and forth. Mm -hmm. If they are connecting through VPN, we have a good security. Right. On the data communication channel, is SSL certificate? In one of the sessions, they talked about a certificate pinning or something. Can you throw some light on how we can secure communication? Yeah, I think um, I would recommend that you guys attend the one o'clock session from, I think his name is uh, Paul Batum. He's actually an Azure Mobile Services Program Manager from Microsoft. So I, I think he'll be diving into this a little bit more specifically. Um, but I think from a, so he would give you a more authoritative answer than I could. But I think from an authentication flow and, and OAuth, you don't necessarily need HTTPS or anything like that. So the token flow and the way that it's implemented, make sure that's all done securely. Now from a data perspective, you can just set up a, an SSL certificate so everything's going over SSL. Um, and then the, the client from on-prem, that BizTalk services uh, agent on-prem, or the hybrid connection manager is what they call it, back into Azure. Uh, that's Microsoft's implementation that's, that's uh, secure. That's secure and encrypted. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we got a question right here. What's the difference between BizTalk? Oh, sorry. Sure. What's the difference mm -hmm. between BizTalk and just a WCF service? Uh, are you talking about BizTalk server, BizTalk uh, services? BizTalk on the local thing that's pushing out to Azure. Uh, so on uh, the, the, yeah, the BizTalk agent on-premises, which Microsoft calls the hybrid connection manager, is, is just basically creates just that, that little tunnel to, to send the data over there. So it's not a, a web service implementation in and of itself. So that can send over, like, t like I mentioned, TDS data from SQL Server, uh, or uh, just, uh, you know, say, you know, may create a connection to an on-premises web service of some sort. So it could be, it could be a WCF service that is being it called from be, the cloud. It could be all sorts of other things. Yeah, right. it could be SOAP, it could be REST, whatever. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, we got one right there. Can you say uh, how this would work in a multi-tenant environment? Like if you had a multi-tenant application that you wanted to host and hook into other, your tenants, ADs, how would that, uh, so can, you, can you kind of talk to that? So tenant from an AD perspective? Or like an AD forest? Or are you talking about uh, multi-tenant as in like multi-site type of setup? Uh, multi-site where one tenant might be one company or one entity, another tenant might be another entity, totally unrelated. I see, so you're talking about like, say you, you're running your own SaaS type of implementation? Exactly, yeah. I see, got it, okay. Yeah, I, that's a good question. I think, you know, just, you know, if you put me on the spot and a ask me to answer it, like right now, <laughs> I would say that, you know, you would, you would wanna create, you know, unique BizTalk services uh, implementations for each tenant, that not, point. Not necessarily getting into their data. Uh -huh. Okay. For, for a multi-tenant app that hooks into their ADs so that they can get single sign-on. Right, yeah, I think um, you just create multiple <laughs> BizTalk services, one for each tenant that, and then you do the individual uh, you know, configuration back to their on-prem AD. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm getting the, sign, I'm getting the hook to, to, to wrap things up. I'll take one more question and then we'll, we'll wrap up, but I can stick around for other questions. Anyone else? I think we see a gentleman uh, over here. And this is the last question. You mentioned that storing password information uh, was an anti-pattern. How does the Azure Mobile Services uh, prevent you? Uh, why do you no longer need to store the password uh, with Azure Mobile Services? 
right? Because it's uh, it's utilizing an OAuth uh, an OAuth implementation, and so you're basically sending uh, basically claims and tokens, and uh, none of it's not sending along password information. So, you know, I, I would recommend just taking a look and, and reading up a little bit on on OAuth to understand that implementation a little bit more, uh, because you know I'm I'm certainly not an OAuth expert, but uh, you know, it's it's fairly complicated, but it's uh, you know it's a, a secure, safe and secure solution to pass along. Instead of using a password, you're passing on claims and tokens. Make sense? Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I think uh, we're going to wrap things up here. I'll be hanging out here for a couple of minutes. If you have anything else, I hope uh, this helped you out. Thank you.